There are many reasons why people start businesses. Freedom, fulfilling a dream, creating something of your own. But one of the biggest motivators is money. If making more money is an incentive for your venture, then your biggest payday may come when you sell your business. Even if money isn't the reason you went into business, your hard work and goodwill must have some kind of value. But a lot of entrepreneurs don't plan on selling their businesses, and therefore will get a lot less for it. Succession planning is something that business owners, for the most part, completely ignore, or at the very least, neglect. It is never too soon or too late to think about when I want to get rid of this business. And one of the biggest challenges that business owners must accept is nobody is going to pay a premium price to buy a job, especially yours. They don't want to buy a 60-hour work week, an 80-hour work week. They don't want to buy headaches, hassles, problems, fires. What they want is a strategic business that predictably and sustainably generates business, that generates revenue. I know that when business owners first start out, they don't like the notion that one day I'm going to have to let go of my baby. But the strategic business owner plots that out right at the inception. The term succession planning refers to passing over control of the business. You have to be prepared to delegate, step back and take a leadership role. Like so many other processes in business, selling your business requires some thought and putting pen to paper. You have to create a business plan. You have to have policy and procedures. You can't make it up as you're go, going along. You can't shoot from the hip. You can't manage by the seat of your pants. Well, you can, but it's going to create stress, anxiety. Uh, you'll create bottlenecks. You. If you're, if you're the one that everybody goes to to solve all of their problems and fix all of the pieces, leadership is everything to the success of a business. The value of a leader, a business leader, is three, four, five hundred dollars an hour. So if that business owner is doing work that is twenty dollars an hour, he's essentially embezzling two hundred, three hundred, or four hundred dollars an hour from his very own business, from her very own enterprise. That doesn't make any sense. One of the biggest steps for an entrepreneur is hiring that first employee. Cash flow, quality of work, and issues with managing are common excuses that stop the sole proprietor from hiring. But in most cases, doing it all yourself is what's holding you back. To say that you cannot afford to get help is one of the greatest restrictions on the business being able to grow. Because there's only so many hours in a day. There's only, only so many tasks that can be done by the business owner in a day. In order to create genuine leverage, they have to be able to utilize the time and talent and resources of other people. If you can't build an organization with people, your ability to grow that business will be severely, severely diminished. Learn to let go. Learn to coach people. Learn to hold people accountable. Learn to train people so that you can get out of the trenches and start taking care of genuine leadership that will allow the business to grow exponentially. You want to double your business, you got to dramatically reduce the amount of time that you're spending nine to five on lower value clutter activities. It's not always easy to put a value on a business, but a good marker of success is how well it will run without you. One of the great tests as to whether somebody is truly a business owner is when they can take a guilt-free three-week vacation. Most small business owners today, they can't walk away from the business for three weeks. 
and they'd, they'd come back to a disaster. Many of them can't walk away for two weeks. Many of them can't walk away and take a week off without checking in, uh, checking up, voicemail, email, spending three or four hours a day in Mexico, making sure they have internet access so they can deal with business stuff while they're away. That's not a healthy side. Uh, that's not a business that somebody else would want to buy into. So it's vitally important that we create a business that is busy so that we can step away and return to a business that is not just surviving, but thriving, that did as well when we were away as it did when we were there. In fact, frequently, uh, our clients will sometimes admit to us that it was a, a real breakthrough for them to realize that their business often worked better when they weren't there, because they weren't meddling and muddling. And you empower people so much more. You empower your staff so much more to go to a higher level. But they get there because the business owner has been able to elevate their conduct, their behavior, their skills, their ability. It's a win-win for everybody. Big Fish Video Productions.